just let me turn the cap on. All right, so this is the hardest test that we sell at Gamaco. This particular unit is um, very robust, very heavy. Uh, how much they weigh, Dave? Shipping weight's about- 94 kilo. 94 kilograms, takes two people to move them. Very uh, heavy in the back, particularly. Um, yeah, they're not a toy. If you look at the bench, you probably see this bench is bowing. They're a very solid unit. We've tried all different types of hardness testers, and this is by far and away the best for the blade work that our customers usually use. It comes with test blocks, spare indicators and so forth. This particular test block lock is at 6.62.6 .6, and a hardness tester will typically read plus or minus one hardness, one point of Rockwell. They work by, well first of all we're going to load up the dial so we make this small arrow point to the red dot and then this bigger arrow here we make it C on the scale. Okay, and that might be vertical on yours, it might be over, you can actually adjust it by playing with the internal settings, but it doesn't really matter anyway. When we press start, what's gonna happen is it's gonna drive that indenter into the piece using a known weight, um, and it's gonna measure how far the indenter gets driven into the piece. The ultimate aim is, to, as I say, end up with a, um, a reading within one Rockwell of the test piece. And in this case, the test block is 62.6 Rockwell. And um, if you can just zoom in there, we came in at 62 on the test. You'd normally take three results and average them out, but that'll, that'll be fine for the purpose of this. So we know 62 Rockwell. Take one of these, it's a customer's blade. They've sent in for hardness testing. And we're gonna hardness test it now. The hardness testing is going to leave a, a mark on the blade, so we always hardness test back behind where the scales will be, but as close as we can to the front. Just need to remove a little bit more tape here. So I can get in any imperfection that's uh, any spot of dust or rust or anything that's on this anvil or on the blade is going to uh, cause a false reading. So I just want to make sure that all that material is out of the way. That. And then we're going to load it up. I'm going in between the two pinholes. We know for a fact there's going to be scale there um, to cover the mark that's left. The indent. Some people like to leave the indent on the face of the blade. The idea being they can tell their customer exactly what the that that, that what that mark means. It means that they have actually hardness tested their product. So here we go. So in this particular case, this blade was manufactured by a guy by the name of Darren Hay from B Blades. Darren was shooting for a hardness of, uh, of 59, and in this case, he's ended up with a hardness of 60.5, according to the dial on this, which we know is probably reading a little bit out by um, 0.6 under. So it's actually probably closer to 60, uh, 61 and a half. Or 61, probably closer to 61. 61 rockles are very fine knife, so he's done a good job with his heat treat on this knife. We test his other one. Can't remember what steel or spec, but um, it's regard. It doesn't really matter anyway. For the purpose of hardness testing, all that really matters is that we get, uh, we get a good result there. So, very important that it sits flat. I often like to get my head down and make sure there's not a gap of light, which there isn't. He's got a very straight blade here, it's good. We're going to, um, again, preload the blade, the red dot. Just make sure it's on point there. Let's start. And, uh, you know, people that are serious about knife making, they're going to be serious about the hardness of their blades. 
it's something you should um, you should take pride in and getting it right because a blade that's um, yeah again look 61 same again same I suggest they came out of the same furnace on the same heat treat cycle so uh, yeah if you're serious of uh, so 61.5 is probably a realistic figure for these for these knives uh, he was shooting for 59 so he's a bit over but you can always temper them back you can't once you've tempered down you can't come back up without a proper heat treat so he's in a pretty good position you can put these back in the oven at a slightly higher tempering temp if he wants to bring them down 61 uh, that's a pretty nice knife and for the intended application which i believe is uh, is hunting um, it's going to be a give, it, give it excellent um, give excellent performance at that hardness but the machine itself if you're serious about knife making if you're serious about getting your blades right if you want to assure your customers you've done the right thing and your heat treats on spec 